Welcome back to the Marina Show. Last time you saw me with the beautiful friend of mine, Runda Ebedir, who has returned from Bolivia. We were getting into an emotional part of the segment, but we had to cut off. Don't worry, we're back here at the Marina Show. Runda, welcome back. How are you? Love you, Runda. I love you too, Seth. So much. Okay. <laughs> Runda. Yes. So we were talking about, uh, just to debrief from last time, we were talking about the love that's in these kids' hearts, regardless of the fact that they don't have parents, they don't have property, they don't have things, but there is so much love in their heart. Yes. So what other stories, what other experiences can you tell me about that love that you experienced? There was um, <coughs> this girl. <coughs> we, we loved all the children, but... P.S. Were... Runda has bronchitis. <laughs> That's why she's coughing a lot. Just bear with us. <coughs> there you go. Okay. So there was... Um, we were all... Like, we loved all the children, and we spent time with all of them, but some of them, like, hovered towards, like... Some of them had, like, favorites. Not favorites, mm -hmm. but, like, they were just more comfortable with some of us. So there was this one... Girl, she was like 13. What's her name? Soma. Okay. Yes, beautiful girl. Gorgeous inside and out. And um, she didn't speak a word of English, and my Spanish is <laughs> not there. But, like, we got each other. Like, we talked. I don't, don't ask me how, but we talked. And I knew a lot about her. And um, on the last day, she stayed. We, our flight was at 4 a.m., and she stayed at church till 1 a.m., and I... I've been to her house before. I've walked her home before, so I knew she started walking. I'm like, okay, you're not walking home alone. You live 15 minutes away. So I went with her, and I went with one of the counselors from the church. And I haven't, I'd never met her mother or anything before. And when I went to, like, take her to the gate, and she was like, one second. Like, she was in tears, of course. And she's like, let me get my mom. I was like, okay, like, I don't, okay. Like, I'll meet your mother. I don't mind. But her mother came out, and she just, like, looked at me, and she like she embraced me like she hugged me and she was crying like she was just holding me and weeping and I was like I I didn't understand it like I didn't understand her love she was like there was so much in it she didn't say anything but I know what she was saying she was saying like thank you for loving our children basically but it's them that loved us like it was that moment I just that's when I broke down because I didn't cry before I said I'm not gonna cry I'm gonna be strong for the kids but I just, I lost it. Like, I lost all control at that moment because I'm like, what did I do for this woman to love me like this? What did I do to deserve this love? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. But she loved me, so. Isn't that how Christ loves us? Exactly. Unconditionally. She doesn't need to know anything about me, my name, anything. And it was, it was lovely. I'll never forget her or her mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. You just strike back a memory that I had in Bolivia. I was... It was the last day again, and we were in the church, and one of the girls, I'm sure you remember her, Andy. Of course. Andy's Andy my sweetheart. So amazing. She's beautiful. She's so, her personality is so charismatic. She's so full of life. I've never met a character or a person in my <laughs> life that is so vivacious, so, like, so, like, mischievous and so fun and always, like, adventurous. Yeah. I just loved Andy. Like, Andy was just my little <laughs> doll the entire trip. She's very affectionate as well. She's so affectionate. Like, when she, she hugs you, she hugs you. She hugs yeah. you. And she showers you and kisses. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. She's like, take, take my cheek and just kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, <laughs> and hug me, hug me. And I could not, I knew I would not be able to say bye to Andy. And then she said to me one night, the last night we were there, you know at the front of the church where there's, like, trees and yeah. stuff? She took me there. She was like, I have something for you. So we went to the, to the front of the church, and it was just, it was so dark. There wasn't a star in the sky. And all I could see was her face. And uh, she looked at me, and she, she drew out this, like, this fake flower. Wow. She's like, what do do? And she just was, Runda, like, she was weeping. I've never seen it. I've seen children cry in North America. I've seen them cry about toys. She was weeping. Like, I've never seen so much emotion on someone. She was weeping. Like, you know when someone's, like, you know, like, like, so much pain in what she was saying. And she, I was wearing this, this t-shirt, this white t-shirt, and I remember it was drenched in tears. Like, I remember that it was wet. Like, I could actually wring it out from, the, from her tears. And we just stood there in this quiet night crying. And I've, I didn't speak her language. I was <laughs> 10 years older than her at the time. But it was just as, it's just like you said. What did you say on our last episode? We are all fluent. Fluent. 
Love, the language of love. In the language of love. And the language of love just permeates your age, where you live, and you look like. Everything. Everything. I want to ask you about uh, the counselors that you saw there. Because a lot of the counselors like us in North America, they're younger. Yeah. Like Marcello and uh, so Chili and Luis and Mario. What did, what did you notice about them? Um, the counselors, the counselors are great. They, um, the servants there, they're very humble, and they taught us a lot about that because they do so much for the church. Like they are the church, the youth, and you don't see them. They're behind the scenes. They're always. Like, you're like, where is this person? Where is this person? And then later you'll hear, oh, they were doing this. They were building this home. They were, it's like they're so involved in their church and they love their church so much. And the children, like when we went, because we're new faces, they were all over us and stuff. And they were all over their counselors. But if you caught a glimpse of it, if you just saw them sitting with them for a second, you know they're like best friends with all the kids. They're all amazing with the children. And the kids love them. They look up to them. They're like... So they're a model for us. Oh, yeah. For us. Like, we, we went to serve these people, and we were served. Like, I still feel like I did nothing. And one of our girls, she stayed behind. She, she was supposed to come back with us, and she extended her time because she... Um, really? She was so moved. She had to stay in. Monica Gerges, her name is. And she just emailed me yesterday. She's like, you have no idea the lasting impression our group made on these people like they're still talking about it every time you message them we got their emails and their face yeah. the, every time they message them they can't stop talking about it like like you've changed them and I'm like how like it's a joke to me. like how is that possible like when they changed us like when that. we come back and I can't think of anything but Bolivia yeah I know and like when I'm already thinking like planning out my next trip when can I go back what can I do because the service doesn't end there you don't have to be in Bolivia to serve the church there right like, what can we do here mm -hmm. to serve the church? Mm -hmm. <sighs> I, was, I was speaking with one of the other uh, servants who went, and she was telling me, that maybe you can give me your views on this. She was telling me a story about the one time that, so the kids always go home to eat, you go home to eat. One time you decided to cook for the kids. Mm. And I, don't, I want you to tell us about it, but how do the kids react <laughs> to the fact that food was set out? They, um, they're so used to, because usually like when the guests are here, they're very accommodable. Like, for us, like anything, like when the food is here, the servants would wait for us to eat first. And I'm like, like no, like you guys have been working all day and we're probably like playing with the kids all day, not really doing much, but it is, that's on its own a service. But, um, cause you learn a lot from the kids and, okay, anyway. <laughs> but, um, so they'd wait for you and the children would wait outside and we'd be like, come eat with us. And they're like, no, no, like they know, like, they have a system there and they all follow it. So this day that we we're like, come eat with us, or like we, and when we handed them the plates up, like they, they lost it. They were like, they can't believe it. And it's funny to us every time. Like, we brought these t-shirts, we brought like 300 t-shirts. And uh, the night we gave it out was like one weekend because we want to do it as a surprise. Yeah. And um, I went up to one of the counselors and um, one of the servants, because we want to give the servants the first choice. And I was like, choose one, like take as many as you want. We have them in like every color of the Bolivian flag. And um, he looked at me and he wasn't even looking at the teacher, he's like, for me? And he's like, and I was like, like what a silly question to ask me. Like, of course it's for you. And he just froze, like he wouldn't touch the teachers. He just, he started crying, Louis. And then he looks at me, he's just like, thank you, like for coming, for helping my church, for, it's like there's so much that he wanted to say, but I know like the language barrier kicked in there, yeah. and it, it was okay. Like I just hugged him, and I was you like, it, it was so much more than the T-shirts, and yeah. and for me, like we couldn't believe it. we're like, what have, what have we done for them? Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. They have so little. I remember, you know, when you take the kids to Playland, like we take them oh. to the roller coasters, and they're so excited to go to this like little little version of like Wonderland. Wonderland, <laughs> and. Uh, I remember Sarah or I was so affected, one of the servants that we went with, she was so affected because one of the <coughs> boys, he had a pair of flip-flops and one of his flip-flops broke. And in North America, if your flip-flop breaks, you're just like, oh well, you chuck it, you go to wherever, Walmart, and you just buy a new pair. And the little boy just held it and silently started crying. And Sarah just cried so much she's like he's mourning the loss of something that we don't even think is valuable 
And so what we ended up doing, like, as you guys gave them the t-shirts, we ended up going out to this, like, Bolivian flea market. <laughs> Have you been? Yeah, we it's went crazy. To <laughs> we went to the Bolivian flea market, and we ended up buying them 100 pairs of shebeshim, <laughs> which is slippers or flip-flops for these kids. And we just went out and handed them out. And Sarah just wanted to be the one to, to give this boy his new pair of flip-flops. And it meant so much to them. Imagine if someone gave you, came to our church and said, here, we've bought shebeshim, flip-flops for everybody. We'd be like, what is this? This is not even a gift. This is an insult. And it's just so funny to contrast that, and it's such a grounding experience. There was an incident like that, actually, that really, like, put things into perspective. It was one of the first days there, and we went, we did outreach visitations to one of these families, and they had, like, I don't know, like, ten kids, maybe, in, like, this enclosed space. Like, it's all just dirt on the floor, mm -hmm. no real house. And um, we went, and we visited them. We brought all the kids lollipops. And we had just enough for all the kids. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. We weren't expecting that many. So <clears throat> one of these kids, he was like five. He was eating the lollipop, and he dropped it on the dirt. And like we all saw this happen. It was during the bite. Like we were doing a verse with them. We were trying to get them to memorize the verse. And um, while they were talking, like I was watching this kid, and I was like, he dropped the lollipop. And I was sad because I'm like, there's not, like we didn't bring enough. And then he, he picked it up. And he started eating it again. And I wanted to say something, but how could I say something? Like, it wasn't even about that's not hygienic. It's the reality for these kids is for us in Canada, kids drop the lollipop, that's OK. Throw it out. There's another one. We'll go to the plaza, we'll buy one. For these kids, there isn't another one. Like, that, that's it. And that's how, that's the hand they were dealt for life. And that's how they cope with it, so. Mm -hmm. That's the hand that they were dealt. I'm so sorry to close off. But we're out of time. But that's such a good story that you ended off with. That sometimes we drop a lollipop and get the next one. And sometimes people have to make life of dirt. But they still have love. Thank you so much for coming, Runda. It's been such a pleasure. Oh, I brought you a gift. Oh, thank you. Yes. Runda, thank you so much. You're Please welcome. say it's one of your amazing t-shirts. It is. Thank you so much. And yeah, I want I you guys to know that Runda herself, being so <laughs> humble, is the one who designed these amazing shirts. And yellow is the Marina Show's favorite color. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you next time on the Marina 